Okay. Uh, so last time we talked about Linux scheduling and we talked about the completely fair uh, scheduling algorithm that is used to schedule normal processes while real-time processes have higher priority. Okay. Uh, then we started talking about Windows scheduling. So in principle, Windows scheduling is similar. So there are two main characteristics of the scheduling algorithm that are the same, which are uh, priority-based and preemption. So the scheduling algorithm on Windows is also priority-based and preemptive. Uh, so, uh, and this is you know the stuff that you are familiar with. A thread will run until it blocks, until it requests I/O, for example, or until it terminates, or until it its time quantum expires, or until it gets preempted by a higher priority uh, thread, or there is preemption. And real-time tasks or real-time threads can preempt non-real-time, because real-time is just the highest priority level, as we will see in the next slides. Real-time here is the highest priority level or the top priority level in the system. Okay, uh, So when we say real time is the top priority level in the system, does that uh, mean it's uh, hard real time or soft real time? Soft. Yeah, it's soft real time. What's hard real time? There's some sort of deadline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there is a deadline. So there is the notion of a deadline. We have hard real time. When we don't have the notion of a deadline, when it's just high priority, then it's, uh, it's soft real time. And there are numbers that encode priority levels on Windows. And the numbers that encode priority levels on Windows are just, uh, uh, on Windows, we, it, they use larger numbers to encode higher priorities, unlike Linux. So this is a difference in the encoding where uh, bigger numbers encode higher priorities. Now, on Windows, there are priority classes, and within each class, there are some priority levels. So let's look at this table that shows all of these uh, classes and levels. So the columns here are the classes. Each column is a class, and within each class, there are priority levels. So the highest, the top priority class is the real-time class. Then the high priority class, then above normal, then normal, below normal, idle. That's the lowest priority class. And within each class, there are levels ranging from time critical, highest, above normal, normal, below normal, lowest, and idle. And there are numbers to encode this. And as you can see, the numbers <coughs> overlap. For example, uh, the normal level within the abnormal class has a priority number of 10, which is the same as the highest level within the normal class. So there is an overlap in the numbers. Uh, but uh, the interesting observation is that the numbers for real time uh, for the real-time class do not overlap with any of the other numbers. So the lowest number for real-time is greater than the largest number for all other, for any of the other classes. Okay. So if a process has real-time, then it has the top priority. So this is the, uh, you know, the encoding, the priority encoding system on Windows. Uh, now, how does the, the algorithm use these priority levels? It will use them in the, uh, basically the way that we have studied. So there are, uh, you know, factors like the length of the CPU burst. So shorter CPU bursts get higher or lower priorities. Shorter get higher priorities. So if the time quantum of 
uh, a process or a time quantum of a given process expires, does that indicate a longer burst or a shorter burst? Longer burst. Yeah, if it uses its entire time quantum, that means that the burst is long because I.O. processes do not use the entire burst. They request I.O. before their CPU burst uh, expires. Uh, sorry, before their time quantum expires. Uh, now, if a process waits, if so, if a process requests I.O. or something that will put it in the waiting state, then its priority is uh, increased. Okay? Uh, foreground processes are given a priority boost of 3x. So the, the priority is multiplied by 3 for uh, foreground processes. And this is all intended to favor interactive processes. So that the point in doing all of this is favoring interactive processes to give better responsiveness.